and what about on the Giorgio Pion yeah. side the next year then? How, what was the what was the approach for him? Because if people don't know, right, right now, obviously everyone knows he's signed for Cloud9, right? He's going to be like the next big superstar, right? Now it makes sense, dude. The last year he just had, he was like a true, like, mid-carry, just win lane, win the game, like exactly everything you'd want in all middle in a But that wasn't like the, the, the first year, the first split especially, like, dude, this was a way more protected mid laner. Like the joke at the time, like yeah. I said, was, it was like, it was the junglers team. So how, how did you try to integrate Jojo Pion into the squad? So Jojo, firstly, Jojo wasn't even, there were people that didn't want Jojo to be in the LCS. Okay. Uh, and it even got to the point where I was reminded recently when visiting an ERL team for various reasons, that there was a world where Jojo was going to, we were trying to send Jojo to ERLs. Right. Uh, the thing to know about Jojo is Jojo has like, weirdly, like a large amount of Polish followers. Like, of po like okay. a lot of people in Poland know who he is. And like, it got to the stage where like, I, I think it was Syncroft was asking to like co-stream his academy games like in the okay. final and I think I don't know whether it's because of Mystiques I don't know whether it's because of Inspired but like just randomly like lots of lots of Polish people like know who he is and respect him a lot right like more than more, I think there were more Polish people that were in favor of him getting promoted than North American people as a okay. percentage of people right. which is like ridiculous but like I, I literally have no reason, right? Like, do I blame Mystiques for this? Do I blame, like, I don't know, no, blame, like, you know, do I credit? I, I, I really don't know. Um, but basically, yeah, there was a world where he wouldn't make it to, to LCS. And in that world, I basically said, he's not sitting in Academy. Like, see what you can do to send him, send him on loan to ERLs. And there was one, it's a big team, it's a big ERL team, so I'm not going to say which one it is because yeah, I may cause controversy. But basically, maybe they want to go and say it themselves, right? Uh, but they recognized that he was good, and we were in talks where if their mid laner got promoted to LEC, which it looked very likely was going to happen, JoJo would be playing on that team, and you know maybe he would have gone. He would have won EU Masters, right, on that team. Like it was a really, it was a really, really strong team. Um, but uh, but in the end, after some. <laughs> After some discussions uh, and some reminders about previous discussions that have been had 12 months before and after some other, yeah, after some discussions, uh, it was, it, Jojo eventually came into the team, right? And Jojo, what I would say about Jojo is that he was a very good facilitative mid laner. Um, the... When he was playing with contracts, contracts would play hard carry. And like the biggest things were we would play stuff like Lulu Kindred, or we would play like he would play Gragas, or we would play Galio, and uh, contracts would play the carry jungle. So he had a lot of experience playing with like, a, you know, contracts. Obviously, you know, he had an insane world this yeah. year, right? And he, he was obviously far too good. Like JoJo and contracts were obviously far too good for Academy, even though they came 10th. Like it was really, really obvious that like to anyone with eyes that, and this is what tells me that the majority of NA viewers have no eyes because when he got promoted, they were just like, oh, how can this guy be good? He came 10th in Academy. And right. I think it was in, in Ven did an article saying, this is why Jojo Pion is going to be a bust. Let's look at some statistical <laughs> <Okay>. things, <laughs> which is one of the funniest. It's like, uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I always have something that is pinned on my, so whenever okay. I have uh, my laptop, I always have something that's pinned to my back screen. The, you know my my yeah, yeah. which normally it's normally a tweet that somebody has said which is right. inconsistent. But this article here is literally was for the entirety of that year pinned to my back screen, like as a motivator to make sure that it worked out. Um, and uh, yeah, so so basically the agreement with Jojo is if we're promoting to him, he gets a year. It doesn't matter like how bad he plays, he gets a year because we're not promoting him because this is the agreement that you've you've made. So we're going to stick to this. And if you're not willing to give him a year, no matter what, don't even bother keeping him. Let him go somewhere else. Um, preferably in Europe so he can get better. Uh, and the reason why I kept pushing for Europe is because I was like, if he, we send him to Europe, he's going to smash everyone, and then you guys are going to look like idiots. But I didn't say that, obviously, right? But that was in the back of my mind. Uh, like, if you're not going to do things this way, like, you guys get to look like morons, and I don't give a shit. 
Okay, so so in the end he gets he he got promoted, but we knew he knew how to play this facilitative style really really well. Um, yeah, maybe maybe now isn't the best time to talk about how the coaching structure and and the behind the scenes thing. Maybe that's yeah, for a future a future discussion to happen. But if we just talk about Jojo, uh, I would say that uh, him being brought in, it was really really clear that his knowledge about the game was very, very undervalued, uh, underdeveloped, sorry. Because we, we had like a game where Bwipo played Gangplank into us in the warm-up tournament. And he, 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 we were watching the review of the game and he, uh, Impact was like, why are you standing here? You, you get crit by this battle barrel and then you can't fight uh, for the rest of the fight. And it was something like this in the review of the game. And Jojo turned to him and said, what, GP barrels can crit? And oh yes, is I, just... I think I might even told this story. He just didn't even know what the champion did, right? Yeah, he he just he just didn't even know what the champion did. I think it's all, had... didn't Empire say something that's like because GP had been out of the meta for a while, so he just never played yeah. against it or something, right? Yeah, and w when we get to MSI that year, that that will come up. Uh, but basically, right. like he he basically just didn't understand the game, and having impact on the team was like the best for him because he impact <coughs> never hesitates to tell you. Impact never hesitates to tell you when to educate you when you're lacking knowledge right. in the area. And uh, I would say that my relationship with Impact, I would say that I taught Impact some things, but Impact taught me some things as well. And we would have very frank, aggressively frank debates sometimes. Uh, if, it, if it's but, not too secret, is this, can you give us an example of something he taught you or something that you made a point that you thought it's a great point? Um, so... Uh, him teaching me or me teaching him? You, him teaching you. Just, I thought it'd be okay, a funny so, so okay, so just just some things about. Uh, uh, so obviously, my my tendency uh, is always that you want to play play mid. Uh, you want to play mid jungle into top, and there were some things he taught me about specific matchups about how he can prevent he how if he's on the defensive side of a particular matchup, and he knows that this is happening. Like he can, he can play a lane. So it's really without going into very, very detail. Basically, uh, uh, things about specific laning matchups and about oh, how right. okay. he, how a matchup can go one way, but if you have like the correct ward at level one, you can like all into the death, and then uh, you can you can like lose ninety percent of your health, like seventy to ninety percent of your health. But the dive that should happen doesn't happen, and you get to base, and you're you're still okay in the match. Oh, so it's quite but, technical information. There. It's not yeah, just like something yeah, simple, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so the kind of nice. things that he was teaching me was was these more technical was was really really technical things. I think the thing that I encouraged Impact most to do was play more aggressively on weak side, because I think he like one thing that EG did. The reason why EG was so was such a strong team in North America. And, you know, I wish that we could have seen the CG at Worlds because they weren't prepared at MSI, but it would have been insane to watch a team at Worlds, is the way that the EG would play is four people would play on weak side. We would play 4v5 on weak side, try to set the map into a trading side situation, and Danny would solo push on weak side, get funneled farm, and the other four would play on the limits weak side and try to waste enemy's team as a time as aggressively as possible, which is a typical funnel strategy. But obviously, if you have a really good team fighting AD carry, this is a way that you can like buy them time to get back into the game. And everyone memed, oh, Danny's laning phase isn't very good. I think <sighs> part of that was the, I think Danny and Vulcan synergy in lane wasn't the best. I mean, it wasn't awful, but I've seen better lane synergies. Uh, also, I think Vulcan is a very direct person. Uh, so sometimes the, they had a, uh, differences in personality. I mean, I, th I think they 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 get on quite fine as human beings, but often, you know, coming to conclusions on things wasn't always the best, wasn't always the easiest. But I would say that that you know, if you have an AD carry that isn't very strong in lane, there are ways that you can get him into the mid to late game in in a lead if you're willing to sacrifice somewhere else. And Jojo was, you know, facilitative mid laner, always happy to sacrifice. Impact always happy to sacrifice. So this is how the teams would get ahead and. You know, even in the games where we fell behind, even against Korean and Chinese teams in scrims, we would still find ways to, to get our way back into the game by funneling Danley. Obviously, he would be further behind against a Chinese team than he was against a North American team. But if he was only 1k behind in laning phase, we would always win the game. Like, because his team fighting was just, he was just the best team fighter in North America. I don't care what people say about Berserker. Berserker was better in laning phase for sure, but 
team fighting, Danny was better. But um, so 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 yeah. So the if you ever look, like I think that EG twenty twenty two EG is so interesting. If you look at how aggressively we play on weak side in the four v five and always playing to the limits, never like you know kind of dancing around the limits of the enemy team, just literally just wasting their time, just wasting fifteen seconds of the enemy time, and flashing out if they ever try to call our bluff in exchange to get Danny like an extra 200, 300 gold. And it would pay off in the late game. Um, yeah, so so that's... Sorry, how, how do we... Oh, we actually we started right talking about uh, Jojo yeah. and all that stuff, but it's all good. It's all good yeah. stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, so, 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 that, so that was kind of impact. So I think that I think it was a, a discussion with impact. Um, one of the things I appreciate about Impact is he was always willing to listen to you. He was always willing to listen to your ideas. He was never defensive. And he was always the h first to call himself out. Like, after a game, if he did badly, he would immediately come and say, I fucked up here. Ah, and right. he would even show it. He would literally show it. Like, sometimes when you just lost the okay. game, where your top lane has entered, the last thing you want is to go and rewatch the game. But he would drag everyone into the review room after the game, and he would be like, I fucked up. Here's how I fucked up. Don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's what I was saying about Impact. In fact, it was great. But the other thing about Impact is he would always be willing to try new things, right? Like we were, we were like the Jazuke game where he didn't want to go top. We were willing to lane swap. We had like an elimination game in upper bracket in the first playoff series where Impact went mid. He played Rice mid and Jojo played Lucian top into uh, Bwipo's GP and solo killed him. Um, but that was something that normally a veteran, especially a... Uh, I don't want to say Korean because that's stereotyping, but like some Korean veterans would would not be willing to to do this kind of thing. But Impact was always willing to try, was always willing to try new ideas. So I appreciate this. But anyway, but to to fit into to go back into Jojo, uh, so Impact was always willing to give him new ideas. Inspired is really clear about how he wants to play the game. He's quite a high resource player, and that fit really well with Jojo. Jojo basically doesn't want to scale. He wants to have full agency from the game from minute one, and he'll draft for it. And he'll practice the picks that he needs to go and play. And, you know, he, he grinds the game harder than anybody. He was, like, ranked one in Champions Q when he just, when people were taking it seriously. Um, but uh, I think that he was having too easy of a time of it in Champions Q. And the problem that we had uh, that year as, um, as, as, a team, as a team coming up, as a... Uh, as EG is that in the first split we were like come of the up the the guys who were upcoming we had something to prove we would grind super hard in scrims we would try hard for our lives and we had a lot of room to grow because obviously we had one rookie and one kind of pseudo rookie learning a lot of things <clears throat> and we got there by the end of the split but in summer when we were the best team no team was challenging us like you know well that's a that's a bit of light TL TL would would challenge and CLG would try, but their mechanics weren't quite good enough. But a lot of the other teams, which you would hope, would well, if people forget the, the team that won Cloud Nine was almost irrelevant until the playoffs, right? Yeah, but that's be like I mean, I'll just be as direct as I can. Like Cloud Nine and Hundred Thieves didn't try hard in scrims. Ah, like, right. they, they, and you know, we would get better scrims against Dignitas than we would against Cloud Nine. I would say that when LS was coaching, the scrims were always good. Like I, I think that actually, this is a weird thing to say, but I will credit. Jojo's the speed of Jojo's development, a, a a little bit, a little bit on LS because LS would do weird stuff in scrims and they would win playing weird stuff because they were better than us. But it it you know Jojo's perspective early on was we should just play the game in the Korean style. And then when we would lose to Cloud9 playing all this weird shit, he would be like, "Huh, there's other ways that I can do this. So let's try to learn some of these other ways." And you know, he lost. Uh, I think on stage it was either it was either to Zillion or to Ivan mid or something. And then for Champions Q that entire week, he just played Ivan for like, a, like right. <laughs> uh, which was a ridiculous. Yeah, but but so that was Jojo. I think in I think Mystiques when he was in Academy and contracts and um, in, inspired and impact had a lot taught him a lot of things. Uh, and I think he was he's fortunate to have had those teammates, but also not everyone can take feedback from impact. Like it's it's pretty brutal. Like the way he will give feedback to you is he, he can like break you really easily, like if you if your mentor isn't tough. And Jojo Jojo had the mental to kind of handle that. So that's that's his credit as well. 
And then, of course, he went to MSI, and the first game, Caps played fucking Anivia into him, and he literally has never seen an Anivia. He literally didn't even oh, know what right. Anivia, what Anivia did. Well, like he didn't even know what the wall did. And then, this is the thing which annoyed me the most because G two, so G two were better than us at MSI, for sure. But they kept beating us with like stuff we've never seen before in NA. Like Targamas would play Pike, and then he would come in, and Jojo wouldn't understand like the Pike road timers, right. or they would pick like uh anivia or they would, and there's like literally no way we could have won against that like there's i mean <laughs> you know if, if they played a standard i think they would still have beaten us but i think the games would have been a lot closer and obviously we went zero six uh that msi against g2 but uh we had closer games against rng and uh t1 t1 because they were just playing standard, and like we understood how to play standard, but all this off meta stuff. No cool, funny, no chance, interesting you know, like... clips based on topics from my content. Well, subscribe to this channel, then, or you know, be a pleb and don't.